Yo, 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 man, you already know what it is, man. It's that. It's that. Island God Talk podcast, man. Your favorite podcast you ever seen. <laughs> Ju and King Michi in the building. Your favorite two co-hosts, man. How you doing today? Man, I'm doing great. Can't complain. It's another day. But I got a good quote for you this morning, bro. And my grandma gave it to me. Really, I gave it to my grandma, but she said it to me before, bro. You can never lose. Like, if you still in the game, you can never lose. Thanks, thanks. And as long as you woke up another day, you're breathing correctly, your body parts moving fine, you're still in the game. You're I'm, always still in the game. I'm telling you, because I was just thinking, like, I woke up, I was like, damn, I'm not dead. So if I'm not dead, I can be rich by tomorrow, for real, for real. But, like, <laughs> that's how. Like, Thanks, man. You always got a chance, man. You literally, you always have a chance as long as you don't give up. Once you quit, yeah. that's when you, you start dying at that point, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. So that was a little motivation early in the podcast for you. Like, if you're not dead yet, you can still achieve all your dreams, all your goals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't wait till you ready to die. <laughs> <laughs> like that. But we can get right into this thing, man. We can get right into this thing. Because I've seen this little thing. And really, I'm going to ask you first. How should your girl act around your friends? Um, Your woman, if she's your woman, she should be a reflection of you and should not embarrass you and should <laughs> always make you look good at all times so around your friends she should be behaving like a like a normal human being but also watching what she does watching what she says and just being very conscious of her movements and how the things she do can be perceived around your friends facts that's facts. like the best way to put it like we all know we don't want our girls like flirting and all up in another nigga face and and things like that it's also up to you to be the type of guy that wouldn't mess with your friend's girl so you can attract the energy of guys to have that same type of honor about themselves that is facts that is so true because like i'm not gonna say it but like we see it a lot bro we've seen like oh people break up and the next thing you know she runs to the homie that's the first thing a girl's gonna do bro one you shouldn't keep those kind of guys around you bro like, I'm pretty sure the Tate said it. Like, it was like, but it was Andrew Tate that said it. Like, it would didn't matter how much money, like, somebody paid him, how bad the girl. It could be, like, a 10 out of 10. Like, he would never mess with one of Trish, like, Tristan's girl. And I took that shit personal because I feel like that's how it would be, bro. Because when it really comes down to it, especially if it wasn't, like, you knew the girl before. Like, it wasn't like, oh, it was a friend group and then one guy dated her. Me and my friend's girl have nothing in common but my friend. Mm -hmm. So it's like it should be no amount of how bad she is, no matter no money, no matter how much money, it should always be a no. Yeah, because when he was talking about that, he was talking about um, treachery, and he was talking about how it's it's really shameful. You're you're not really a superior man. You're not really a high value man if you don't have that form of discipline and. They always say they don't, like, if a guy doesn't have sexual discipline or is too money hungry, they won't allow him to be in their circle. And that makes sense because then he can be controlled by other things other than him controlling himself and his own mind. But um, more so just back to your woman and, like, how she could, should act around your friends. To me, in a lot of the stuff, it shouldn't have to be explained. But if, if it's certain things that she did that that you didn't like even it's just like some little subtle shit that she thought was harmless whether it was fucking laugh too hard at a joke or some shit like that like you gotta make sure as a man you gotta speak up on things you gotta correct it or it's just gonna snowball into bigger things i totally agree i totally agree and we all i mean not we all but like even if your friend does tell a joke and it's okay let's say it's funny she let out a little chuckle okay it's not the end of the world <laughs> but she laughing too hard at that shit like no she's like ha ha no that's a red flag because i'm not even like nah hell no nah, we're, nah, we're nah. all weak as fuck like it's just that funny like okay <laughs> but if she's like the only one in this yeah OD, it just like it's the optics of it that the other people in the room are gonna be like damn that shit wasn't even that funny like that damn her ass weak over there like Right. I'm telling you, and that's how what it that's what it really is. And if you're a girl watching this, I would say you gotta go out of your own head and look at it from like your man's point of view. Be like, 
hmm, should I really do this? Should I really laugh at this joke, even if it is funny? Maybe internalize that. Just laugh in your head, like, because I feel like it's all about what's being seen from the outside when you're out with your guy friends. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say we all go to the club and I bring my girl. It's really like what's being seen from the outside. Like, it's basically the outside looking in, what I'm trying to say. So if there is a joke or something something is funny or something does happen, it should be very minimal. Like, I'm not saying you can't have conversation with the other guys, yeah, but I'm just yeah. saying it should be short and sweet. Yeah, definitely short and sweet. Keep it damn near like on some, like it doesn't have to be like directly about business, but the same way you would interact, like a woman would interact with like, like, um, co-work well i hope she ain't got work husbands and shit like that but oh the same way like a woman should would interact with men in a professional setting like that's just kind of how it should be kept and it's not even more so because i know women go like damn i can't even laugh at a joke it's not that it's just about a man knowing and being sure of the fact that he has a good woman because besides yourself a good woman is going to be the best investment that you can ever make as a man when it comes to building your empire and and your kingdom and all and everything that entails with that. And why? Because she's going to be a role model for your kids. She's going to be around your kids probably more than you if you're out saving the world and trying to bring home the bacon and do all that stuff. And she is also going to make things easier in life for you and one thing about if she's all flirty and just loud and and, and things like that oh and, and just trying to be the center of attention around other guys then that's going going to be a red flag because she should be more so focused on like damn how can i make this situation easier for him maybe let me laugh at his joke it wasn't that funny but let me you know what i'm saying like it wasn't as funny as the other guy's joke but this is my guy so let me make sure i'm Holding him up, building him up. I'm encouraging him. You just hit it on the head, my brother. I'm so serious. Because I feel like bringing your girl around your friends, that's probably going to be one of the biggest tests, bro. For the simple fact, like, that's exactly what she be, should be doing. Like, encouraging you. Like, encouraging you up. Even if there is some other stuff, it should, she should be focused on you. Mm -hmm. Like, and that should be her main priority. And that's what I want in a woman. Like, I will literally want her focused on me. Like, if we're out, she should be by myself. Yeah, that's your teammate. That's literally your teammate. You got to think, even though you, your group of friends, y'all are tight, y'all also still competing with each other in a healthy way. So if you're competing with each other, that means who's ever with you, whether it's your kids, whether it's your, your girl, all that, like, that's your team. That's your team. And boom, my team and you got your girl. Okay, you're on, you're on y'all team, you know what I'm saying? And your team should be encouraging you because you're the team captain. You're the quarterback, you know what I'm saying? Facts. And I ain't gonna lie. If you want to figure out, like, if that girl's the right for you, just leave her. Just leave her and see what she does. You got to watch her ass, though. But just, like, go on. Say you're going to the bathroom real quick. Leave her and see what she does. If she, like, changes, starts, be, it starts being the center of attention, starts talking a lot, flirting, anything like that, not for you, gang. But if she just really just sits there, you might need her just to sit there and be like, it didn't wait for you to come back be like, oh, okay, bruh, you, you might got to go in there. You might got to go in yeah, because it's like, when it comes, I was just watching um the girl Tammy. She has a show called Unfaithful Cotton Act. And the dude on there, he was so in love with the Joan, looking for kids and all that stuff. Mind you, he had already cheated on her. And she was using that as an excuse. He, he's, a, he's a crazy simp. Like, she, her TikTok, I guess, went viral because she sat on him in line. And she, she, she went to barber school. And then she, she started sitting on him. And lining him up with um in lingerie and shit and that shit went viral then she got jobs and now she got celebrities calling her for that same service and they put a hidden camera on her and the dude asked her like yeah you got a boyfriend and all that it's like no i never had a boyfriend and all this imagine they've been together for years oh you know wow i'm saying and so it's like as a dude trust your gut trust your intuition he had and obviously that's an extreme case because I hope you guys wouldn't let y'all girl have no job like that where they just sitting on other dudes in lingerie. No. But trust your gut, trust your intuition. If something doesn't feel right, you you bring it up, you address things. As a man, you can't be scared to address anything in life. Because if you don't address, you won't progress. I love it, I love it. And that brings us to a funny thing, a very funny thing, bro. 
when it comes down to this cheating shit, bro, because I'm I seen some kind of video, bro, and it was like he cheated first, so I got my get back. Any don't go for that. <laughs> like any bitch that's talking about get back revenge, let her go, bro. Yeah, she, let her go. She has, <laughs> and as a woman, it's important to be on. Like as a man, you should be honorable. Yeah, you shouldn't do anything that's considered treacherous. But like the cheating thing, that's is is niggas sometimes. Know what I'm saying like. <laughs> Not not black men, like you know what I'm saying, yeah, but yeah. other guys, other races, they do that sometimes. So um, when uh, um, if you have a woman that has any type of like treacherous mole in her body, you gotta, you should you shouldn't even want to deal with her to be honest. Because if she's if that's her reaction to things is to oh I gotta make it even, I gotta get my get back and shit like that, like that's not gonna solve anything. That's not a, a solution to a problem. It's like temporary oh now i feel a little bit better because i got my get back and girls are on social media are giving me praise a bunch of other single women are giving me praise and now i'm out here single a few days later now i've got now i'm just just a hoe i'm telling you i'm telling you like get back especially for a woman is never is never good and if you let's say your girl cheat on you first it's different you can get your get back but you still gotta leave her it's not even get back why yeah. even go waste your sexual energy trying to have a meaningless connection uh yeah you can go do that if you want if that, that's gonna make you feel better for an hour or so <laughs> like after that now you waste the time because nine times out of ten instead of that whatever energy you had whatever anger you had you could have used that in a more positive way that's gonna get you a return on your investment rather than just nothing nothing in some random bitch that you don't even have no connection with. That is very true. Not gonna lie, that is very true. But you know, like when those feelings first hit in, and this is coming from a nigga. I my bitch fucked went won't my bitch. Won't my bitch. <laughs> and this is some hey, big big you you taught me this. Bro, if your girl like does some larceny shit, bro, that's just not your girl. Like you gotta know, like, it's just not she wasn't yours, like you it can't couldn't be have been. couldn't couldn't have been couldn't have been so you, that's really how you got to look at it like your bitch she on you it won't my bitch <laughs> she really won't mind so technically she didn't cheat on you for real and even if she did like let that be a part of your story let that be a part of your fucking origin story that made you a multi-fucking millionaire that's what happened to Hugh Hefner he got cheated on and look what the fuck he did he created a million dollar empire off of women you know what I'm <laughs> shout out to that guy <laughs> Shout out to that guy. But that is going to bring us into our next topic, bro. How long should you wait in a relationship to have sex with your girlfriend? Um, to have sex with your girlfriend? Yeah. In a relationship, though. To be honest, you probably should do it before you get in the relationship so you know what you're getting into. So you know if y'all have that type of chemistry and you know that you actually like her and it's not just lust because if you wait until a relationship and then you fuck her and now y'all are on some now like the lust is gone and you realize damn i don't even really like her and now you have her emotion that's the thing about it when the lust is gone nine times out of ten she's more deeply involved than you are like pulling away type shit so you don't even want to get into a relationship without like having some type of like sexual experience it doesn't have to be your first night you meet her but definitely before you lock it down or moving together and things like that that's a great i like that i like that a lot me personally when it comes down to that i also feel like you might want to test the water (laughs) you might want to try it out before you like, just like a car, bro. You might want to test drive a car before you take it off the lot. Because mm-hmm. as soon as you take it off the lot, it depreciates, my guy. And nine times out of ten, she's not a virgin. So it's not like you're waiting for marriage or something like that. Now, if you are on, like, some pure stuff like that, go ahead and wait. Because nine times out of ten, especially if y'all both are very inexperienced, it's going to be the best shit you ever had, regardless. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is true. If she is a virgin, I would say wait. Or if you're a virgin... I mean, well, if you're a guy, if you're a guy and you're a virgin, don't date a girl that's not a virgin. Obviously, that's yeah, sh- don't. <laughs> like that's you're setting yourself up for failure. You're at setting that yourself point. up for failure, and you're setting yourself up to just depurify yourself. You a guy, you a virgin, you pure as fuck. You're 
especially if you're not watching like to me I don't count you as a virgin if you've been watching porn and beating your dick and all that shit like most of the incels they're not virgins now I'm saying they had some type of sexual experience but you really had none at all you never watched porn you probably got so much substance about yourself you probably like are really that dude on the low you just don't even know it yet you just gotta like build your confidence up that is true and speaking of confidence, what's what's a good way to build confidence? Just all the ways we've um, talked about before, just imp- improving yourself. Like that's gonna be the number one way, always. The, yeah, just um, improving yourself, getting your money up, getting life experience. Like everybody want to be like the taste. Everybody want to be like the taste. These dudes are. Like, I don't know how old Tristan is, but I know Andrew is 35, 36 years old. They have experience with life. When they're, they don't have to fake shit. They don't have to worry about confidence. They don't have to worry about, oh, I don't have any charisma. Oh, I'm not brave. They've been through shit. They've been locked up for, for months. And even before that, they fought. They actually been to battle, been to war numerous times, up to winning championships and things like that. That's what it's about. It's going to be your life experience is going to be knowing who you are and where you're going every day. You know what I'm saying? It's, that, those are the things that are going to make you a confident man. It's not, oh, just like, yeah, you, you can you can fake it until you actually get it, but at some point it's going to be tested, and that's when you can tell if someone has fake confidence is when some shit really happens in their life. I'm telling you, and I learned this kind of recently, bro. Like, I feel like confidence, bro, it's really all about, like, doing it, like, and that's confidence with anything. We talked about this. You want to get better at talking more confidence with girls, you got to talk to girls. But, like, I'm talking, like, a quick, maybe not a quick way, but, like, a way to get confidence all around, bro. I'll say the number one thing is making more money, bro. Me, speaking from me personally, like, you start making them more money, you walk different, bro. I'm telling you, you start walking different, you start talking different. You don't check your bank account before you buy shit, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that will make you more confident, but if you solely base it on those things, like, you want to be the type of guy that I don't have to say anything, I don't have to show anybody anything, but they know I'm a confident man when I walk in the room. That's the you want your aurora to speak it. And yeah, having money will definitely help you. It will, it will help you get there to that point. But you don't want to be the type of dude that uh, if if I'm having a down period now, I'm fucking sad and shit like that. Like or if I'm if I'm up now, I'm extra confident and I'm feeling all good and shit. But as soon as someone take everything away from me, uh damn i'm sad as fuck so you definitely want to do those things like acquire more money get more experience talking with your with girls and stuff but you don't want that to be the basis you want to exude it from your core you want that shit to come from inside you don't want anything outside this tangible bullshit that don't even really exist none of this fucking shit like i don't give a fuck about none of this shit like i'm that nigga regardless i've always felt like that through my whole life telling you the other day from when i was sitting in the fucking crib as a baby i always felt like that nigga like so i think yes the experience all these things just life in general will help you of course getting money yeah you're gonna you're gonna feel better like money solve problems that's what that's a big part of that shit money just solves fucking problems but let it be in you not only you feel me great way because you said it yourself bro because once they take that away you don't want them to take your confidence bro you can't let that like i feel like that's an easy way to be broken type shit and especially like going to jail i feel like that's a big one bro like let's say you was the man outside and they just take everything with you and take everything from you and throw you in jail now you in the cell with fucking a few roaches another (laughs) smelly guy and two books and your your fucking sink is attached to your toilet i'm saying like yeah how confident you're gonna be in there i'm saying that's where it really counts though when you think about it like yeah when i'm at the bottom when i ain't got shit when i i don't give a fuck like this i'm i know who i am like i'm saying like you don't let nobody else define you these people's perspectives opinions and all that bullshit now you just know and you tell it to yourself every day till you fucking really believe it that is instilled in your literally your core beliefs hey that's where it gotta be because i'm telling you like life can change at any moment my nigga 
So, but like you said, it's not on you, it's in you. Yeah, and that's the same thing with charisma, bravery. Like, everybody feel like, oh, hey, I'm the toughest motherfucker in the world till some shit happen. Or, you know what I'm saying? It got, you feel like you just, that that dude, you feel like, oh, yeah, I got this, got this, that, all this stuff going on, all this stuff going on. And then you get, you hit a bump in the road, and now you, you sad as fuck, your fucking posture changing, you walk in. Like you ain't get, uh, got nothing. Like nah, you don't don't let the affect the world affect you. You affect the world. And move with love. Be kind. Be charismatic. Talk to people. Show people grace. Be understanding. You know what I'm saying? Just just be superior. I'm telling you, all those good core traits. Core traits from the core, bro. From the core. So you, nobody can say you faking. Because, mm-hmm. bro, I'm telling you, especially, like, when you get around, like, more superior men, like, people going to see through that fake shit. Hell yeah, man. People can, it's a lot of things that, especially men who really, like, tap in with this world and they know what's going on and they seen it a million times. All the dudes, they can tell when someone's faking it. They can tell who going to be a snake, who going to do this, who going to do that. And all they got to do is, boom, they can hear you talk for, like, 10, 10 seconds. And they, like, I, you know so much about a dude. Like, I used to wonder, like, damn, like, how can I always tell when a dude has a father in his life or not? And it comes down to how he carry himself, how he dress, the energy he carry by himself, how he interact with other people. Is he able to even talk to other men, you know what I'm saying? Do he look other men in the eye and shit like that? You know, all those are things that comes from having a father in your life didn't have a father that's where you got these little nba young boy want to be little niggas because nba young boy their daddy they don't have no <laughs> other dad they don't respect no other man on this earth besides young boy like i'm saying like it's a lot of little niggas like that and they you know what i'm saying they hey they get you see they get exterminated quick you see little niggas shooting little niggas every other day you know what i'm saying and like it's because boom lack of fathers i'm telling you and that's one of the Dangerous people in this world, young niggas. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. We was talking because they about don't got that real confidence, bro. They get confidence from guns, from yeah. the drugs, from money, from little thoughts. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, and that's that's some scary shit. Like we was talking about that shit. Like you you go to a place and it's just too many young niggas. You gotta go. <laughs> you gotta leave because nothing as good is gonna come out of this. Yes, bro. especially shit in the nightlife, but it's fucking in the daytime too, for real. Like, you just gotta be, just gotta move correctly and know, like, if you're gonna be the type that you wanna approach to and talk to young niggas, like, it's best for the, let them to walk into your setting. Know what I'm saying? Like, if you a barber, you got him in your chair, hey, ain't, ain't got no choice but to listen to you at that point. But if you see, boom, you ride past the projects, it's, Four, five little niggas, they playing with guns and shit. It's probably not the, like, you got to be a certain type of nigga, like, that they already respect for you to walk up to, walk up on them like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they first thought is, who the fuck is this nigga? What he trying to do? What he about to do? Type shit. It was just about, like, being smart because a lot of them are already so lost. A lot of them is, like, lost as fuck. I'm telling you. And it's really about, like, the fathers not having fathers in their life. And I like how you brought up that point. You can kind of tell when someone doesn't really have a father in their life or their father hasn't been that present because it is how they move. Like the looking people like looking another man in the eye, their handshake, bro. And this is some like coaches like, bro. And that's another thing. Coaches like if you play in sports, coaches can be a big help or like a huge hinder, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you really need to watch who is coaching your kids, bro. I'm telling you because that's really that's going to be a father figure mm. in their life, bro. Especially me like, hey, my father died when I was 13. Who was the next male role models I had in my life? It was football coaches, you know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, and I I have a lot of respect. I have a lot of like, you know what I'm saying? It's I had the right type of coaches, you know what I'm saying? I had coaches that was also working in the church and doing these things. They got their own businesses going on and things like that. Things I like to look up to. Coaches that'll tell me, like, coaches told us in the middle of practice, like, yeah, I caught gonorrhea from a jump before. That's why y'all need to wear condoms when y'all are fucking these girls because it's going to happen to you too. Like, those that are the... Hilarious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's the type of dude you need around rather, rather than the kind of the type of coach that's fucking coming to practice high and he trying to be your friend and all that shit like that shit ain't ain't gonna help you in life at all bro i'm telling you bro like coming 
bro, come to practice. Hi, don't get me wrong. It's football, basketball, whatever you play. Like, I understand there's competition, bro. But that fighting shit, bro, that shit is dead. Like, we got to really take that shit out of sports, bro, because that shit's not cool at all. Bro, it was up here. It was Petersburg. Y'all know we in Richmond, all right? Peters, if, you, if you're from Richmond, then you know it's Petersburg and, like, the K. It was, like, Petersburg and the Canes, bro. Petersburg, kind of ghetto. Not going to lie. Kind of ghetto. Canes. Kinda. I don't go to Petersburg, me personally. I, bro, crazy story time. I'll tell you later. Bro, but I don't go to Petersburg, me personally. But it is ghetto. When they come and really it be the coaches, bro, because kids get it from the coaches. Next thing you know, a whole brawl breaks out. Kids find parents beating kids and shit like. Bro, we used to be little doing more fighting on the field when my high school used to play them. We used to do more fighting, and you could just tell it's their conditions. Like they feel was shitty as fuck, muddy every time we come down there and shit like yeah. that. And it's like they don't really have no good teams, or they just really trying to get you to. Fight every time, every time you run the ball and shit like that, and it's like we're busting their ass all game, and we can't even shake their fucking hands after the game because they so like man aggressive. You can tell it's like a fish right from the head down. It's good. They got terrible coaching, and they most of the kids on the team don't got fathers nine times out of ten, like, and that's just like yeah, that might be a, a stereotype or whatever. But come on now, like we already know. Like if you look at these inner city ghetto high schools, most of the kids don't have. No, nah, I'm saying fathers in their life. You're not wrong. And, and you can tell on the sideline, bro, it's straight moms, a couple grandpas out there, a couple grand. There's, don't get me wrong, there's a couple dads. Or dads that only come when they're playing sports. Only around for that. That's a big one, bro. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. Because if you're not in your kid's life Monday through Friday, but you just show up on fucking Saturday afternoon or high school Friday afternoon, like, you're not really being a dad, bro. Nah, you just... Oh yeah, my son, my son makes me look good. So let me come out here. But when it comes to making sure he's doing his homework, I'm not there for that. Come on now. Oh, I'm not at least there at the end of the night checking, making sure like, yo, did your homework? Nah, I'm saying I'm coming home drinking a beer and drinking a beer and all that shit. And this one, and I feel like this is more of a married thing or in a relationship for a long time thing. If your girl. Don't want to have sex with you no more. Not she's just outly saying or like you're just noticing the signs. Like she's not being, she's not all over you like she was in the beginning of your relationship. Um, yeah, I think, and yeah, yeah, you were about to say like that, that's a, something like as a man, you got to look at yourself first when it comes to stuff like that because it's. It's your job, really, to keep the romance going and to, to keep things up. Like, yeah, of course, like, it's really both you all job. But if shit is going bad, then it's going to be on you. So you got to look at it like, yeah, it's my job to keep the romance going and, and to keep things flowing. And a lot of times when it comes to a woman not wanting to have sex, it's got to be if... If it is you, it's going to come down to, like, certain things. It's going to be, like, all right, you're not, you either fell off your, not on your purpose, you're not, so you don't have that essence that she she craves anymore, or, um, it it can really be, it can really be a lot of things. It's something you're not doing, could be your performance, could be, maybe she's just got too much on her plate, like, a lot of, like that's like a lot of women's problem nowadays is they are struggling. They have a lot of things to do, and they not nah, saying. Then when it comes to a man, they can't be in their full femininity because they gotta be so fucking masculine throughout the day because because of niggas. Niggas are are having these women struggle. Really, you're not wrong. And I like how you said it. Do be a lot. Don't get me wrong. We I know we talk on this podcast about like how. Kinda. It is hard to be a man, but it's hard to be a woman too. Not gonna lie, and it's more so about balance and everything. Like, if your woman has a lot on her plate, bro, she might not want to have sex with you. And really, it, it comes back to you because, like, what could you do to take some stress off of her? If you get what I mean. Yeah, and it's really just about being as superior as you can as a man, and it's about holding things down. It's about 
like being a provider, making her feel protected. That's another thing that will make her probably not want to have sex with you if she doesn't feel protected. If she feels like you're not fucking a man and she feels like if somebody runs up on y'all and she might be having the one to do the self defense, then yeah, like she how do you expect her? She might not even find you sexually attractive no more. If you let your body go, like you start getting out of shape and looking like a fat slob sitting in front of the TV all day, you really expect her to still find you as sexually attractive as she did at first? That is very so true. I like that a lot. And I feel like it also comes down to the decisions you make, like, in the relationship, bro. Because I'm not going to lie. We all kind of, like, as men, you're going to get a little softer being in a relationship, bro. That's just natural. For the it's it's natural to do it, but as you got to stay conscious of that shit and work against it. You're absolutely right. I was going to get to that, but you just hit it. You <laughs> just hit it. Bro, but... But it's true because you're being around the feminine energy, so it's only natural. You're going to mm-hmm. get a little softer. But as a man, it's your job to work against that shit and still be like, still like standing on shit, making decisions like, nah, babe, we're not going to eat brownies and ice cream tonight because like I got a diet I got to do. I feel like it's those little things, those mm-hmm. little decisions. Bro. Yeah, it's those little decisions because if she knows like, yo, he's rid, those are things that confirm that you're really on your purpose when she, oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah, I know you go to the gym in the mornings, but can we do this? Can we, can we watch this movie and, and you fucking capitulate to that shit? Then what you expect? Like, yeah, her subconscious is going to be like, damn, he's less masculine than I thought. He's really not on his purpose as much as I thought. If, well, maybe she just feels like, or, like another thing is how dudes, they be faking so much in the beginning it's like if she's your girl the, the fucking mask is gonna slip she's gonna see who you really are eventually and like damn this nigga really lame like <laughs> nah, that's, hey, that's, that's a thing that probably would make a girl not wanna have sex with you anymore it's like it, but it's, it's all about you though I'm telling you it literally that's the main point it always boils down to you no matter what and it be the little stuff bro what I mean it be the little stuff I'm like, like let's say you as a man say yeah we not eating out today we're saving money your girl probably going to be like, oh, no, it's okay. We can do this. She's going to come up with ways to come around it. Come around it. Or like, we can do this. You got to say no. You got to stick to what the fuck you say, bro. Yes, man. You got to, hey, that's just part of being like an honorable man, bro. You got to be honorable. You got to stick to your word. Stick to your word to yourself first. Like, if you say something, do it. And that's another thing. Like, if you're saying things and not doing it, yeah, she's going to find you less sexually attractive. If other women don't, find you sexually attractive then yeah she might not want to fuck you no more you know what I'm saying I'm not saying like oh be a dude that's just fucking a lot of girls like nah but you need to be the type of dude that girls want to fuck with you know what I'm saying I'm telling you I'm telling you no girl want a girl no girl in this world wants a guy that no other girl wants that is a fact. That is a fact. And I'm pretty sure, like, I know y'all heard this shit before, bro. No girl wants a man that gets no bitches, bro. Like, it just, no girl does. I don't know why. Do you know why? I don't know, bro. Uh, it's because you are undesirable. It's because most girls, they're looking for somewhat of the same things. It's, it's the main reason why you look at the fucking gorillas or the lion packs or all that shit it's like oh yeah they all want the the head dude because he's in charge they see clearly that he is superior and it comes down to really a, a um just animalistic like wanting my dna to be strong strong passing on throughout generations you don't you're not gonna want the the undesirable dude because of whatever reason and no other girls want him he probably it's it's gonna be some reasons why girls don't like dudes that's out of shape no resources or whatever you don't want to pass that you don't want to procreate with that you know what i'm saying i'm telling you that's why i i believe it just comes down to like it might be other reasons now and shit like that but what it comes down to is about it's all about procreation and keeping a strong bloodline Facts. And I feel like a lot of like TV shows and movies, they fucked it. They, especially like my generation, like the 2000s. Bro, I feel like they really started fucking shit up. Because like the movies I was watching, it was like, it was so, or so the nice guy would get the girl. And like the bad boy, like she wouldn't fuck with him. She wouldn't fuck with him at all. And then the nice guy ended up with the girl, blah, blah, blah. That's not how that shit works in real life. Nah. Not at all. Yeah, and it's like, 
And it's not even about being a quote unquote bad boy. It's just about having that edge to you and focusing more on your purpose and then anything else. When it comes down, when we say nice guys, we're not talking about dudes that are like kind and stuff. Everybody, yeah. as a man, you should be kind. You have no reason. If you're really that dude, you have no reason to be mean and nasty to people. You should be kind and caring and loving. You know what I'm saying? But when we say nice guy, we're talking about like a, a guy that just is not, not assertive. He won't stand up for himself and things like that. Like you don't want to be a, a pushover or somebody that a girl doesn't find masculine enough because of how you carry yourself. Exactly. So for real, for keep up your masculinity, stand on what the fuck you're saying, especially when you get in these relationships or situationships, whatever you in, around any man, any female. And it's worse the same way around man, but too, bro. Like if I tell you, hey, I'm finna have, I'm finna send you this money by Friday, and then Friday come and I don't send him the money, and I don't say nothing. He's probably going to start looking at me like, what the fuck? This nigga owe me some money. Like, where the fuck my money at? Like, now I'm not a man of my word. Yeah, and because you've always been a man of your word, whether you told me something, even if something comes up, you let me know. The first thing, to be honest, first thing I'll think, like, damn, something must have happened to him. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Literally, like, that's the first thing I'm going to think is something must have happened to him. Beyond that, like, not saying you haven't done anything that's, for me to consider you like a treacherous person, so I, nah, I'm saying I wouldn't even even think of that. But if it be becomes that, like, oh damn, this nigga is ducking me. And then I gotta start looking at you a little different. Like, yo, like what? You gave me a word. You ain't hit me up. Let me know what was your extenuating circumstances or why you couldn't do it. Like, you wasn't trying to set no payment plan <laughs> up or nothing. Like, to me, that's just like now I got now I saying start looking at you a little different and when I start looking at you different I gotta start looking at the motherfuckers you hang around different cause if you got treacherous energy nine times out of ten the people around you do too you just hit it on the head I'm telling you and that's what the shit that people don't be understanding bro it be the little stuff bro it really be the little stuff so most of the time it don't be a big deal it just be like that the reasoning behind it bro and I'm telling you, most things just boil down to the principle about it. Like, ducking people, doing all that, never a good idea. Like, if you owe somebody something or you say you're supposed to do this, do it. And if something comes up where you can't, just explain it to them, bro. Most people are reasonable people for the most part. Like, if you owe me money, just be like, hey, I got you next week. But when next week comes, like, either have my money or... Tell me what the fuck's going on. Yeah, I feel yeah. like so many people fall out over that shit by not communicating. Yeah, it'd be the lack of communication. And that's the that's just a, a big problem with humans in general. You think since we have all this technology, our interpersonal and communication skills would be better. But nah, it actually just allows us to like duck people easier, to be honest. Yeah. Like when we, because people are, we're not, everybody don't know where everybody live, everybody not. Thinking about like, damn, to get my money, I was gonna have to pull up. He was gonna send me my money, so I'm trying to, like, like, I'm trying to text him. Or if I took something from you, I'm like, yeah, he's, yeah, he gonna he gonna have to hit me up for this. Now I'm saying like, some some people are just weird like that when it comes to communicating instead of just being honest. When it, especially when it, when it comes to other men, you don't want to be treacherous. You you don't want to be dishonest. You want to be. You want to be seen in a good light. You want to have a good face card to the point where people will say good things about you when you're not around. Exactly, bro. Even if they, like, hate, even if they uh, hate her, they still going to have something good to say about you just because of how you, they might not agree on everything you do and say and all that's cool and shit, but they can't say you a bad person. Facts, they can't say you did some larceny shit to him. Mm -hmm. They can just say, oh, I don't like him just because, like, he getting to the money. He got bad bitches. Like, he a high-value man. Like, I just hate that good shit. They can say that. <laughs> yeah, at that point, they just got something wrong. They got to look at themselves at that point. You shouldn't even be, like, really giving a fuck about that. But as long as you moving through this world with love and kindness and caring, and you, are, you already know you're a dangerous motherfucker, you don't have to walk around like tough or trying to prove some shit or everybody that oh uh, nigga step on your shoes you about to kill him like you don't have to be that dude especially if you're trying to build an empire you gotta understand like I gotta before I act I gotta think about it up here I gotta weigh out the consequences and even and the more you do that the quicker you'll be able to do that so it's 
Like, people might think you reacting off emotion, but the whole time, like, nah, you you fucking disgusted with your your main goddamn advisor in your head, and and you figured out what's the best course of action for whatever happened. I'm telling you, straight like that. And you need to watch out for the things that trigger for that thing to go away, like, for that main advisor to go away, like alcohol, bro. Mm. One of the worst things, you, bro, I... Bro, I'm telling you, you need to be careful when you drink it, bro. Because when you drink it, I notice, like, I lose my filter. Like, I just don't got a filter. Now, granted, I feel like anything, I tell the truth anyway. So, like, anything I think, I'm going to say it anyway. So, I don't be having a problem. But, like, I feel like for those of you that, like, be just saying reckless shit when you're off that lick, that's what y'all need to be concerned about, bro. Yeah, you, got, you definitely need to, like, alcohol is going to, fill you with more feminine energy and it's gonna it's gonna um take away some of your your judgment and when when that comes to if you're the type of person you gotta understand like this um this fucking throat chakra this power of the tongue like it's very very powerful so you do always need to think before you speak and you gotta understand how many emotional people is running around out here and use that to your advantage learn how to say things in a way that's gonna like you can still speak with your emotion but just know how to do it like we're all human beings you don't need to overdo it uh saying if i'm if i'm trying to get a point across yeah yeah, sometimes i might get loud on here but that's just me using my emotion to draw attention to draw attention to what i'm actually saying not just getting mad and up here flipping shit like god damn it y'all motherfuckers still ain't got improving yourselves and <laughs> shit like that it's like nah you know how to use it to um your advantage and that's just about being charismatic facts and i'm glad you said that because that happens like with day-to-day conversation too like manipulating Granted, it is manipulation, but like manipulating the environment and manipulating other people too, bro. Mm-hmm. Winning stuff, like getting your point across, bro. It's kind of, you kind of got to manipulate a little bit. Like get the other person to see what you're saying. That's what I'm talking about, my manipulating. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, it, the best way to do stuff like that, if you and somebody are having a disagreement, you ask them questions that lead them to your point. You don't always have to force your point on somebody. Like if I say, uh, yeah, I don't need no holster for my gun. I just put it in my pocket, and I got one in the head all the time. And You're dangerous, man. Instead of me telling you, like, no, 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 that's not how you need to do it. This is how you need to do it. You need to get a holster. You need to make sure it's covering the trigger guard and all these things. Like, nah, I just, I can tell you stories. I, I've got a, a, a so ex-associate of mine that cheddar bobbed himself. So I can, I can tell you stories about shit. I can show you stats. I can ask you questions. Well, what happens? Or well, let me see your draw. And nine times out of ten, if it's in their pocket with no pocket holster, they're going to be, oh, oh, you're dead. You tell them like that, then they're going, oh, shit, maybe I do need to at least get a pocket holster. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's how you do shit instead of like, oh, no, you're a fucking idiot because you're pocket carrying with one in the head. Like, nah, like, it's, it's ways to do things and say things in this world that will help you when it comes to human interaction and just getting what you want out of it. I'm telling you, and I feel like most people don't do that shit. It's always like trying to force your opinion on somebody. And we do it on social media all the time, bro. It never works, bro. It never, like, if me and Jay having a disagreement, bro, me, me yell, start yelling, raising my voice, I'm telling you, that shit is not gonna work. That shit not gonna work at all. Like, we oh, just, no, especially <laughs> me. When people start getting loud with me, the only thing, I just look at you like, I'm confused or I look at you like you're stupid or I might just start smiling like because that's just not what I do when it comes to like discussions and stuff. I'm not going to get loud to I'm not going to get out of character. I'm not going to get emotional with this shit either. Like I know how to like stay in control. Like, yeah, something somebody might say might trigger me, but I'm not going to allow that to affect how I speak when it comes to um discussions or disagreements or whatever and i'm i'm quick to say man we can just agree to disagree because nine times out of ten if i'm stuck on my point and you're stuck on your point and we've already tried to see each other's point of view like you should then it's just agree to disagree we're not gonna keep running in circles having the same conversation and now we get mad because i'm saying that my i'm saying the same thing i was saying and you're saying the same thing you were saying and we're 
Like it's like we're fucking. It's like a brick wall in between us, and we just mm-hmm. fucking yelling at it. Like I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. And once you start raising your voice, like yelling, you already lost the argument, bro. Especially like you would like a superior person you've lost i'm telling because at this point i know i got you out of character bro like once i get you out of character i'm in your head shout out to that guy val bro he taught me this bro a while back once you get into somebody's head bro they're done they're done oh, yeah like whether it comes to sports bro but basketball bro basket bro because there's no you're always right there football you go back to the huddle facts, like, facts, facts. that's why me like we, we won't play basketball together one time but Whole game, I'm, I'm, and that's because yeah, you know what I'm saying football is one of my sport, not the most skillful when it comes to basketball, but when it comes to that talking shit, oh, and getting in somebody's head, man, I can do that shit all fucking day. I'm in your head, I'm like fucking Draymond or Patrick Beverly <laughs> out there on the fucking court, just fuck, just fucking talking for no reason. You know what I'm saying, and I'll talk my way to a win, I might talk my way to a loss. Either way, leaving on the court. Good game. I'm not trying to go to the NBA, so it doesn't matter to me for real. But it's just a part of the sport, to be honest. Now I'm saying it. Now, if it's a nigga on, like, only time that'll get me a lot of character, if it's a nigga on the sideline that's not in the game, just talking like, I don't like that shit at all. <laughs> yeah. Now you fucking yelling from the bleachers <laughs> and shit. Like, nigga, come on, play that. I'm telling you. So, like, really never let somebody get out. And I just want to say, the nigga did win the last time we played basketball. The nigga game the shit in my face. I was, <laughs> like, the shit was fucking crazy. We going to run that shit back, though. But, it, <laughs> crazy. Because <laughs> the nigga called game, too. I swear, I thought this nigga was going to miss. Now, I was out there shooting the other day, bro. That's just my spot. <laughs> For, I ain't going to lie. That's just my spot. <laughs> I was trying to do that shit from the other side. Like go that's a, that's my no that's just my spot I don't know what happened but yeah shit was crazy all right anyway but never let a nigga get in your head bro bro because I'm telling you it's the worst thing that can happen to you because now you're not even playing the same no more you're not thinking straight. not in control not in yourself. control fighting too fighting bro I understand when it comes down to this fighting shit you emotion do get involved especially a nigga hit you kind of hard you like. I got to get this nigga back. I got to get this nigga back. Be careful. Because yeah. now you might get your ass knocked out. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. you are you lose your focus on what you need to be doing and your technique and these and the things. And you're trying to get it so fucking bad. Or the nigga that got into your head. He been talking the whole fucking match. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, those are the type of things that if you let uh, affect you. If you, like, that's... It, like we'll talk about it more next episode, but just mental fortitude, having a strong iron mind, like that's the number one thing that's gonna propel you further in life. Just having a strong mind and understanding how to stay poised and how to st- keep your composure when it comes to stuff like that. Facts, because I do want to say a nigga talking shit and he beating your ass. Oh my god, nigga, I might crash out. <laughs> I don't think me personally that would be a tough one for me. Now, <laughs> nigga, be my ass, and he's talking shit while doing it. And you can't like to me to be honest. If that was happening to me, I'm just, like, hey, bro, we're gonna pick this up another time. <laughs> Ain't gonna be. <laughs> it's like I'm losing and you talking at the same time. You're talking and doing this, so you gotta be ten miles ahead of skill wise because if you're like talking and fighting. You're not worried about conserving your energy and your breath. Or maybe you just that nice. I don't know. But I'm obviously in the wrong match right now. <laughs> Got to be in the wrong match, bro. And probably go home, think about some shit. Because after, probably go home, think about some shit. And be like, to be honest, this fine shit not for me. I might want to go be a Kevin, Kevin Hart-ass nigga, comedian-ass nigga. But that is the end of today's episode, man. I just want to say thank y'all for tuning in and watching to the end, bro. Because, you know, as always, we love the fucking Islanders, bro. Yes, sir, man. We love the Islanders, man. Shout out to Islanders. Um, if you want anything that we you see us use in this podcast, whether it's this charger, these mics, this chessboard, the cameras, we're going to have the links for all of those in the description. Um, shout out Egram, now I'm saying my bro's new clothing line. Y'all going to see... More of that on the show. Know what I'm saying? We love the Islanders. I always, always, always appreciate my co-host, King Michi, over here. Hey, man. 
every week we hear y'all check out our other content if you ain't checked out the Santo Domingo vlogs go check those out those doing numbers too I was checking that shit the other day man always we love y'all we out love y'all